Hello, hi, it's Harry the Computer Guy, and you welcome to our lesson number 37. And in today's lesson, we are actually going to be looking at how we can set up our laptop. Remember, it is the easiest. And actually, we are winding up with our chapter 2, such that we can go to chapter 3 of our lessons. So today, we are going to see how we can set up our laptop. If you have a laptop, open, sorry, the setup should be very easy. Just open it up, press the power button, and if the battery is not charged, you will need to plug in the AC adapter and charge it before using it. AC in full is the alternating current. That means that if you have, if you have your laptop, you're actually going to open it, look for where the power button is, just press that power button. Give it time. And if actually you notice that uh, it is not charged, then you have to plug it into power, then you can charge it, then start using it. If your laptop has any peripherals, remember we talked about peripherals and we say these are uh, external components which are hooked or connected to your computer, such as the external speakers. You may want to read the instructions below since laptops and desktops generally use the same types of connections. You'll find a USB on a laptop, you'll also find it on a, what we call a desktop. You'll find the other network port, you'll also find it on a laptop. So many of the, actually many of the ports that are on a desktop can as well be found on the laptop. Let's continue. So we're now going to be talking about how we can start and shut down a computer. Remember, we have been talking about all the components. We have talked about our computer, but we didn't talk about how we can start it up and how we can shut it down. After assembling a computer, we are going to be seeing that one in figure 2.3. The next step is how it can be powered on correctly. Use and then shut down with the proper procedures. Remember, you don't just, you don't just come and uh, just unplug everything, then you actually say that you, are, you have shut down the computer normally. No, you have to look at some of the things and note them. For example, you have to save all the work that is on your computer before shutting it down. So they are telling us that the process of starting a computer is called booting. At times, people call it the bootstrapping. So that process that we can follow to start a computer is what we call the booting. So booting is specifically the starting or restarting of a computer that involves loading the operating system into memory. And we can classify that one into either the cold booting or the warm booting. Whereby the cold booting, you're actually starting the computer from the main or wall socket when it has initially been powered off. And the cold booting is actually restarting a computer that has been initially on. Let's say you have been using it, all of a sudden, they say it freezes, then you decide to turn it off and on back again. That is it specifically. So we can have the warm booting and the cold booting. Or it can as well be called the cold boot, or the hard boot, and the warm boot, or the soft, soft boot. So they are showing us our figure, which is uh, 2.3. We have a computer system ready for startup. Remember, we made the arrangements before. We have the main socket here. We have our UPS. We have our monitor, the keyboard, the mouse, the system unit, and the printer. And they're all connected well. So we just need to power it on. That is what we actually going to be talking about. So starting a computer. We're going to begin with starting a computer. Then afterwards, we shall see how we can shut down the computer. They're telling us that make sure that all the plugs are well connected. You have connected your monitor to the system unit, your keyboard to the system unit, your mouse to the system unit. You have connected them to the, let's say the UPS. If you're not having the UPS, you have connected them to the power source. Then make sure or switch on the electricity socket and the uninterruptible power supply. So you go switch on your mains or the socket then after, you also switch on the UPS because it also has a battery. Press the power button on the computer monitor first. Then it will light up. 
it should show the signal. That means that it, after you powering it, it will show you that it has actually powered on. Then press the power button on the system unit. It will also show a signal that it is powered on or it will light up. Then the computer should now start to boot and load the windows. That's when you will see either starting windows or loading some files or asking you to press any button to, to continue. At times it brings, let's say, press F1 to continue. Then you press that button, then the computer will continue with the next step. If the welcome screen appears, select your username and enter the password. You'll find that a computer okay, is having either a password, so it will ask you for the username and the password. If you put in a wrong password, then you will not be granted access to that computer. We continue. The desktop should now appear after you entering in the username, the correct username and the password, then the desktop will appear. Give it time to load the elements and the startup programs. Of course, when you power it on, the desktop loads. So give it time for all other programs or also load or other elements. We continue. Shutting down a computer. We're going to see how we can shut down our computer. It has been on or it has been functional. We have been using it. We want to turn it off. They're telling us that turn off computer option is located on the start menu as shown in the figure 2.4. We are going to be seeing that figure. The turn off computer dialog has the turn off the computer, standby, hibernate, and restart options. These options, you're going to actually find those options there. When you click on start, for example, if I click on my start here, they're going to provide me with a start option. So when I come here, I'll come to what we call my shutdown. When I come onto my shutdown, there are also other options. For example, switch user. What does switch user mean? That means that if let's say you have two user accounts on your computer, you want to log off or leave one and go to another one. It's what we call the switch user. It will give you that allowance of leaving one user account and go to another user account. Then log off. If at times, for example, you have, let's say, two user accounts on your computer, you want to shut down one user account, then you'll have to log it off. Then we have what we call the lock. For example, you let's say leaving your workstation for some one to two minutes, you want to go out, you want to leave your computer when it is locked. So you can press the Windows button and L or press that lock. Then it will ask a person who attempts to use it for a password again. Then we can have also the sleep. The sleep can act as what we call the hibernate. That means that it's going to keep your computer in a nap mode. Or it will leave everything the way it has been. Then it actually shuts it down, retaining its state. That is what we call the hibernate or the sleep. The sleep. Then restarting, it is actually turning off the computer and on again. For example, you might be having some of the problems with your computer. Let's say it freezes, let's say it becomes slower, let's say it has worked for longer hours, let's say, and others. So you want to shut or restart that computer, then it comes back again. It's like you're going to be refreshing, it's working. Then you can restart. Then lastly, the shutdown button is down here. You want to completely turn off your computer, you are done your done with everything, you want to turn it off, then you'll need to click on the shut down. Let's continue. So log off and switch user options are also located on the start menu as we have seen them. And this is how it will look like. We have seen it practically. So you'll come to your shutdown here as the, our diagram is showing us, then you look for the shutdown and click the shutdown. That's how it will work. This is our figure 2.4, which is the start. Anyway, we continue. And we have an activity, which is 2.4, and starting and shutting down a computer system. It is all about what we have done previously. So they're telling us that explain the logical order of switching on the assembled computer system and how it can be shut down properly. 
everything has been connected or assembled well so you're going to give us the logical order of starting it and shutting it down number two starting from a fully connected computer system demonstrate how a computer can be switched on and later switched off of course these are these are the ones we have been actually talking about then number three what precautions must be considered into above what precautions must be start let's say what precautions must be considered when you are starting a fully connected computer what are the things you're supposed to look at when you're starting a fully connected computer then we have an activity of integration and they are telling us that Sazamwe Secondary School is planning to have a careers day to sensitize senior one students about the importance or the importance of vocational subjects. The 100, the 100 students of senior one will assemble in the main hall, which has a power supply. That means that we have electricity there. The careers teacher will share pictures and videos showing areas where various subjects are applicable and we have a task here so they are telling us that a device the careers teacher on which computer hardware device will be needed and how they work to support her presentation to the students so what is she going to need she will, will she need a projector will she need any other type of software so you're actually going to tell us what she will need and advise her accordingly. Let's continue. And we have our chapter summary. That means that we have come to the end of our chapter two. So in this chapter, you have learned about the physical devices of a computer system and how it operates. Remember, we talked about the computer hardware and how we use some of them. Then how to assemble a computer. Let's say you have the different components, how can you assemble them together? Safely starting and shutting down a computer. I think everyone has learned how we can start and shut down our computer. Then using computer peripherals. Remember the peripherals are the external components hooked onto the computer. I think we have learned how to use some of them. So that one brings us to the end of our lesson. Thank you for watching. It's been Henry the Computer Guy. So if you're new to my channel, I please beg you to subscribe to it. And if you also have someone who actually needs this content, you can actually help me and share the link to those people. Bye-bye. It's been Henry the Computer Guy. I sign out. Bye-bye. See you in the next chapter.